السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن اتبع هداه ليوم الدين أما بعد كتاب التوحيد شابتر نمبر 44 ابن ماجة reported from الطفيل الطفيل is the brother of عائشة from her mother's side. Aisha's brother from her mother's side that he narrated, Abtufayl. He narrated a dream. A dream. He said, رأيت فيما يرى النائم كأني أتيت على نفر من اليهود. قلت إنكم لأنتم القوم لولا أنكم تقولون عزير ابن الله. قالوا وإنكم لأنتم القوم لولا أنكم تقولون ما شاء الله وشاء محمد ثم مررت بنفر من النصارى فقلت إنكم لأنتم القوم لولا أنكم تقولون المسيح ابن الله قالوا وإنكم لأنتم القوم لولا أنكم تقولون ما شاء الله وشاء محمد فلما أصبحت أخبرت بها من أخبرت ثم أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فأخبرته قال هل أخبرت بها أحدا قلت نعم قال فحمد الله وأثنى عليه ثم قال أما بعد فإن طفيلا رأى رؤيا أخبر بها من أخبر منكم وإنكم قلتم كلمة كان يمنعني كذا وكذا أن أنهاكم عنها فلا تقولوا ما شاء الله وشاء محمد ولكن قولوا ما شاء الله وحده رواه ابن ماجة The meaning in English الطفيل said I had a dream in which I came upon a group of Jews and say to them you are indeed a good people had you not claimed Uzair Ezra the son of Allah then they said you too are good if you do not say what Allah may will and Muhammad may will after that I came upon a group of Christians and say to them, you are indeed a good people if you do not claim Christ, the son of Allah, the son of Allah. Then they said, you too are good if you do not say what Allah may will and Muhammad may will. Then the following morning, I narrated the above event to some and came to the Prophet ﷺ and repeated the whole event. He وسلم, asked, have you told this to anybody else? I said, yes. Then he وسلم, went to his pulpit, the member, and after offering praises to Allah said, Tufail had a dream which he already had communicated to some of you. You used to say a sentence which due to some hesitation that Allah did not reveal in this regard to me anything, I could not prevent you from, I could not prevent you from. Henceforth, do not say what Allah may will and what Muhammad may will, but say what Allah may will alone. So this is a dream. At-Tufail had seen it had this dream, this is hadith in Sunan ibn Majah. And he came, so in the dream, at tufail that he came upon a group of the Jews, Yahud, said, indeed, you are good people. But your problem that you say, 
Uzair, Ezra is the son of God. Because that's what the Jews said. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ عُزَيْرُ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Jews said, Uzair, Ezra is the son of God. وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ الْمَسِيحِ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Christians say, Christ is son of God. So the Jews in the dream replied and said, You too, Muslims, are good. But you have a problem. Your problem, you say, what Allah may will and what Muhammad may will. Then he said, and I came across a group of the Christians. He said, indeed, you are good people, but you have a problem. And that is, you say, Christ, son of God. And the Christians replied, you too are good, but you have a problem too. You say, what God may will and what Muhammad may will. Now, in the morning, at tufail he related this. He mentioned this to some people. Because when you see a dream, dreams are two types. One from the shaitan and one from Rahman. The good dream from Allah. The bad dream from the shaitan. The bad dream you just spit on your left side and you don't mention it to anyone. Spit and that's it. Don't mention it to anyone. The good dream you can mention it to whomever you love or to someone who will interpret the dream who will interpret the the dream for you so at Tufail he mentioned it to some then he came to the Prophet and he told him the Prophet asked have you told anyone he said yes so the Prophet he climbed the mimbar the pulpit and he praised Allah and then he told them that at Tufail has told some of you what he had seen in the dream and I was hesitant to prevent you are you following the Prophet Sallallahu he wanted before the you came to him he wanted to stop them but Allah didn't tell him so are you following because some might say Muhammad didn't know about the shirk so the you has to teach him no he knew about that and he wanted to prevent them but how can he prevent them something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell him? Are you following? So now when Allah sent the you, that is the right time. That's why he approved what the you said. Because had what the you said was wrong, he would have corrected the you. And he would have told him, no, 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 no. It is not shirk. But he accepted. Which means he knows that this is wrong. But he was waiting for receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he said, I was hesitant, just waiting. Are you following? For example, you know Masih al-Dajjal, the Antichrist. The Antichrist will not enter Mecca and Medina. The Antichrist now is locked by chains in the Arabian Sea, in an island in the Arabian Sea. And then he will come out and he will try to enter Makkah and Medina. But the Malaika, the angels, they stop him. Are you following? The Prophet Sallallahu before was told that the Antichrist cannot enter Makkah and Medina, there was a man in Medina who deal with the jinn, known as Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad. He communicates with the jinn. And the Prophet Sallallahu in the beginning thought that he was the Antichrist. Before Allah informed him that the Antichrist will not enter Mecca and Medina. So that's why he came to test the Antichrist, the Ibn Sayyid. He was lying like this on his back, murmuring, talking to his shayateen. And the Prophet Sallallahu came walking stealthily, quietly, in the, hiding himself and Umar with him behind the date palm tree. The mother of this Ibn Sayyad, she saw the Prophet Sallallahu and Umar, she informed her son, so he sat. He said, no, Umar, he said, let me kill him. He said, huh? take it easy. 
if he is the antichrist the dajjal you are not the one who's going to kill him who's going to kill the dajjal isa alayhi salam isa alayhi salam is the one who's going to kill the antichrist so the one who's going to kill the antichrist or the dajjal is isa alayhi salam and he's going to kill him where in palestine in palestine so he told Sayyidina Umar, the Prophet Sallallahu if he is the Antichrist, you are not the one who is going to kill him. Then he said to this guy, to Ibn Sayyad, tell me, what do you see? First of all, he told him, now he is testing him. He told him, I have hidden something. Can you tell me? I have hidden something. Can you tell me? What the Prophet Sallallahu hid? Ad-Dukhan, Surat Ad-Dukhan, the word Ad-Dukhan, said, I have hid something, can you tell me? So the Ibn Sayyad started saying, Ad-Dukh, 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 could not say Ad-Dukhan. So the Prophet Sallallahu told him, Shh. Huh? you cannot know what I have hidden. Then the Prophet Sallallahu told him, can you tell me what do you see? He said, yes, I am seeing now a massive throne on the water very colossal gigantic throne on the water the Prophet ﷺ said yes that is the throne of Iblis because Iblis is with us on earth and his throne on the water where Allah knows some contemporary scholars said maybe this Bermuda Triangle Maybe Iblis is there. Allah knows where. So now, the Prophet ﷺ, because he did not know, and Allah hadn't informed him yet by that time, that the Antichrist or the Dajjal would not enter Makkah and Medina, so he thought Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal. So similarly here, the Prophet ﷺ was hesitant. He was hesitant to inform them because he hasn't received anything from Allah. He didn't receive anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he was reluctant. But after that, he told them you should not do this. So that means, from this hadith, Jews, they know what is shirk. The Christians also, they know. Are you following? And the Prophet sallam, he sanctioned the dream of At-Tufay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from going astray. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us the beneficial knowledge. Amen. We move, inshallah, to chapter 45. My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, we have completed Kitab al Tawheed, chapter number 44. And we will be starting, inshallah, Kitab al Tawheed, chapter number 45. Stay tuned. We'll be back, inshallah, after the break. his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Wa man attaba'a hudahi la yawm al-deen. Amma ba'd. Chapter number 45. Whoever curses time has wronged Allah. So this talks about cursing time. And unfortunately, many people, they curse time. They might say, may Allah curse the day I met you. What a horrible day today. So they curse time. When you curse time, you curse Allah indirectly. Because who made it possible for us to meet? So when you curse time, you are cursing Allah. Because time... Actually, it's just like an envelope in which the events, they take place. Are you following? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالُوا مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ وَمَا لَهُمْ بِذَلِكَ مِنْ عِلْمِ إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ And they say, there is nothing but our life of this world. We die and we live 
and nothing destroys us except at Dahar, the time. And they have no knowledge of it. They only conjecture. This is Surah 43, Ayah 24. Some of the Arabs, some of them, they denied the resurrection. And they said, we will just perish by time. We live and we die. That's it. That's why Umayyah ibn Khalaf, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he brought a bone and he crushed the bone, made it powder, and he came and said, Oh Muhammad, do you claim God will bring these rotten, decomposed, crushed powder back into life? Oof. The answer came directly from Allah. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا He coined for us a parable, a similitude. And he forgot his creation. قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ Who will bring back the rotten bones, the decomposed one into life? The answer? قُلْ Say, يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشِئَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً The one who created it in the first place will bring it back into life. The one who created you from nothing will bring it back into life. It's not difficult for Allah. True or not? So the resurrection is a fact. No one can deny resurrection if he is sensible. So the resurrection, my dear brothers and sisters, is a reality, is a fact and people will be resurrected. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said will happen. Because God is just. God is just, Adil. And there are many criminals in this life, people, culprits, criminals. They killed many people. They looted the wealth of many people, etc. And no one could catch them. And they passed away and they were not brought to justice, right? Is this the end? They wronged many people. So there must be a day and they will be brought to justice. And that's when the day of re resurrection. I want you to just visualize the following. We are watching a play on the stage. So there are many characters, right? And one of the characters is a criminal. Make a mischief, killing, all this stuff. So every episode, after the end of that, the first scene, the curtains, they come down, right? Then the curtains, they go up. And the audience are looking forward to what will happen to the criminal. Any film story, at the end, the criminal will be caught, right? So now the audience are waiting, waiting, waiting. So every time the curtains go up, next scene, episode, the last episode, the curtains came down and never came up. The question is, will the audience leave or sit to wait? They will wait. Why? They want to know what happened to that criminal. If they told them the play is over, oh, chaos the next day in the newspaper all the critics are writing that the playwright he didn't that story is horrible it's the, it, that play should not be there in the first place right because the way it was ended are you following now we are in this play the dunya is the play and we are the characters are you following? So how about those criminals? The curtain will come down and that's it? Or they will be brought to justice? Tell me. Ah, that's why there must be resurrection. There must be another day where they will be brought to justice. Not only this, you know in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about the creation. 
how he created Adam from water, clay, dust, rotten mud, stinky mud, right? These are different phases. If you take the, the earth, turab, and mix it with water, it becomes mud. If you leave it, it will stink, become stinky. Then, from that mud, Adam was shaped and left to dry. So he became like baked clay, okay? Then the spirit was blown into the body and life started. Are you following? This thing, this creation, did we see it? Anyone watched it? Allah told us. We didn't see this, right? Remember, the last thing entered the body was the soul. Allah shows us the, the process in the reverse order. What is the reverse order? What's the opposite of the life? Death. Okay? What entered the body last? The soul. Now the soul will leave the body first. When you die, the soul comes before anything. The moment the soul leaves the body, what happens to the body? Solidifies. If my hand like this, you cannot put it down. Yes, I become like a log, piece of wood. If we leave this body for a while, what will happen? Stings. Because 70% of our constituents, water. The cytoplasm, the cells, all water. Because the water will start to evaporate. And things will start to, bad smells coming out. Because the human being is really, you cannot stand his smell. Just when you get up in the morning, how do you smell? Hmm? You have to go and brush your teeth, huh? If you don't take shower for two days, how do you smell? The animal will not have that smell, but you will have it. So if we leave this body, it becomes so stinky. If we leave it further, start crumbling. If you leave it, everything will go back to the earth. So exactly the, what Allah mentioned about the creation, but it is in the reverse order. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that there will be a day when we'll be brought back, it is a fact. We cannot deny it. My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, we'll be continuing, inshallah, Kitab al-Tawheed, chapter number 45. In the coming episode, looking forward to seeing you. Till then, fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.